All right, this is Conrad back with GOG Boxing. And today we're gonna to talk about the straight right, okay? Now I'm gonna back up here so you can see my feet and we're gonna talk about a few things. The reason we're gonna talk about this is I, I had a, uh, oh, and it's good to be back by the way. Back in the yard, I got a little garden going back here. Dogs walking around, babies crying over there. <laughs> is what it is, gym rat, semi white trash boxing, but anyway. Uh, a, uh, a friend of mine, he's actually a coach, uh, came to me and he was complaining. He said, you know, I always have trouble landing the straight right, my backhand. And I don't feel like I have a lot of power on it. And, and, and you know, it's funny because he's a, he's a coach and he was complaining about this. This is something that he, and he's kind of a young guy. Let's say he's a, a, a coach who's in his early, he's not really just starting, but still. And I've even done some sparring with him, and, and he can land the right. He can land the right. But he was complaining about it, and immediately I saw, I, I saw there's one little minor thing to change, and when I, when I mentioned it to him, then, then he hit me. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But it goes back to your feet. Now, everything we talked about before, I always mention it's the feet first. It's the feet on the jab. It's the feet on the right. It's the feet on the hook because it's your feet then through your hips and then your upper body, your hands catch up. Now, it's going to happen so fast, but that's where you get your power. That's where you get your speed, but it's where you get your, your back hand, your straight right. Now, here's the problem. I see tons of guys now, and this may be from MMA, okay? from the MMA crowd, right? They have really wide stances. Now, I'm not knocking MMA. Some of those guys, they can really fight. And if, and if you've sparred with any of them, man, they take you down, you gotta be careful with that. But in MMA, guys want to grab your legs, take you down, they're, good. they're shooting for your legs. So your stance in MMA, it better be pretty wide, because if you're standing like this, they might even get both legs, right? That's just, it's a different sport. It's a different sport, but a lot of guys are coming from MB, MMA or, or, or these mixed martial arts to uh, try boxing and there's trainers that are going back and forth and they're bringing some of their techniques uh, to boxing and some boxing is going to MMA and that's okay. But the one thing that seems to be, it seems to me that a lot are bringing, and it's not only MMA guys, they're just some boxing guys. Guys feel strong in a pretty wide stance, okay? in a pretty wide stance. I'll tell you right now, this is just my opinion, but you try it yourself. If you go to a wide stance, it's going to be hard to box and you're going to have a hard time with that backhand, that backhand. Now let's talk about why, okay? We're going to end, and then I'll see even how to teach yourself to keep an eye on yourself if you're training by yourself or training on the back or whatever. I'll tell you a trick in a minute. Look, if you want to land the straight right, you've got to get it all the way to the target, right? So with the jab, a lot of people, after they get, let's say to an intermediate level, they feel like they can land the jab, okay? It's true, some guys might turn their front foot to get a little extra reach. Some people say it's not a jab. Some people say the foot should never turn, should always go straight. I say at least twitch the foot. You don't turn the foot, but you feel that twitch so you can, so you can feel in the hip, right? But whatever. We're not talking about the jab, we're talking about the straight right. But obviously, if you're standing in this position and the guy's here and you throw the jab, people get where they feel like they can get the jab. They can reach and, and land the jab. But then they feel like they're too far away to land the straight right. They can't get it there. They come up short or they feel vulnerable and they don't throw it. Okay, they just don't throw it, right? Here's one reason or something that might be why if you fall into that category. You got your feet too wide. Okay, your feet are too wide. And if your feet are too wide, not only you'll have trouble landing it, it'll screw up your balance, it'll screw up your footwork, and you won't have any power on it, right? Because if you're gonna throw the if you're gonna throw that straight right, you might as well have it count, have some pop on it, right? Okay, now, and I'm gonna, we're gonna go to the bags and I'll show you on the bag what I'm talking about. But look, if I'm standing in a boxing stance and the way maybe I'm old fashioned, but for me, a boxing stance is not like that. For me, a boxing stance, ideal guys who do it now, if there's somebody you want to look at now that has an ideal boxing stance, I love the way this guy fights, is Nonito Donaire. He's cutting people off around the ring. He's moving easily. 
he's an older guy and he's still doing great and he's got a great lead hook everyone knows that but in his last couple of fights including you know the one with Inoue man he he was landing that backhand that straight right he was just it was one it was part of his offense okay but look what he's doing he's moving around the ring and he's not he doesn't have a wide stance he now even moving around with a with a wide stance does not feel even natural to me you know you can you can practice your box steps you can pivot you can do anything but if you have a wide stance it makes everything big and slow and to tell you the truth if you for if you have a, an, a little bit of a narrow stance more like your shoulders and let's say you get your feet lined up too much well a tiny adjustment in your back if you have a wide stance you get your feet lined up too much you'll see it's like you're on a big tight rope okay but that's not really the point point is this if you first point there's three points here first point if you have a wide stance and you see some guys there are some guys in boxing who they fight with a big wide stance if they can do it and they're pros and they've got made a career out of it then I'm not cutting them I'm just saying that for the mortal average mortal it's not so easy but if you have a wide stance look what happens okay you throw the jab you take that little step it already widens your feet even more Okay, now look where you are. You want to throw that backhand. It's hard to push off. You can do it yourself at home. And when you do, if you want to reach somebody, you have to you you you, you have to lean you have to lean off it. And a lot of times your back foot will even swing around. You'll start. I call it. You're, it's like opening and closing a door, right? You'll you'll be here and you'll if you, if this is a wide stance and you try to throw it, your natural tendency is for this back foot to come up. For not to turn your heel look if I even turn my if I turn my back heel I don't know if you can see this I can't even really turn out because my stance is too wide but you'll lift up if you lift up and you miss the tendency is to follow through as if you're throwing a baseball you're really in trouble if that happens but the big thing is you're not gonna reach anybody here I am I got a wide stance if I do a jab and then I try to follow I even widen my stance further I tried to punch and look see how hard it is for me to get because when you're talking about reach it's not just about the total distance it's about where you were to start and where the other guy is and the, you want to make him think he's got a lot of space but he really doesn't but if you're like this and he, he thinks he's got a little bit of space he really does because I can't get much further see my front hand and I throw that I can't get much further that's what happens in a wide stance okay makes it hard to land and you're not going to have much power on it and you may start closing this door swinging like a door you see this a lot with guys who are fighting in a philly shell but they got their front feet both turned like that right kind of floyd mayweather style and floyd mayweather he's a genius but he's sort of super, he was sort of superhuman and when they throw because they got that front foot this way their, their stance may not be too wide but it's also easy to wind up shutting a door I'm exaggerating a little bit but kind of like that now what you don't want what in my opinion what you want is to be able to throw with a lot of pop and to throw fast and a straight hard right and to fool just by that basic stance to fool your opponent with distance okay how are you gonna do that well you narrow the stance now everybody saw Rocky and they saw Mickey tie somebody's feet together with a string right so that he doesn't he doesn't have a wide stance and a lot and it's funny I guess everybody who saw that movie and saw that they're like why do you tie his why do you tie his feet together why did he tie his feet together well he talks about it it's a power issue you get more power you also actually if you if you practice with your feet tied together it keeps you it teaches you discipline and you move with your you, you don't do something like that right you don't like if you if you're going this way and you step you you're, you're you're keeping your distance in the same in the same thing you don't do something like that and wind up square that's what the string does but here's what it also does if I'm standing in a relatively narrow stance compared to the wide stance when I say narrow about where my shoulders are more or less right and I'm standing in a narrow stance what I look what I can do okay look what I can do when I throw that straight right I can use my hips bing and I can pop that straight right even without taking a step now to be honest 
you should have your weight you have more weight on a little more weight on your back foot maybe 65 70 percent on your front foot so if you want to throw that you want to throw that right you can take a tiny micro step bam and throw that right bam but you can you can turn your but you can just do it you don't have to take a step at all you do it with your hips now if your stance is wide and you want that hip twist that's going to give you fast pop it's not going to go as fast why this comes down to physics. We talked about this before. You see figure skaters, and the only one probably in the world that talks about boxing and figure skating together. If their hands are wide and they're spinning around, they're going slow. They bring their hands in, they go faster and faster and faster. It's the same thing with your, with, with your stance. If you have a wide stance, you can't turn your hips as fast as you can pop, with a, narrow, a narrower stance. So that's the first thing. You're going to get more pop. You're here and bam, you you blast that. I'm not warmed up, so I don't want to risk. I don't. I got sensitive elbows, especially after being sick. But you're here, bam, and you throw that straight right. Okay. If you're here and you try to do it, see, I'm already. Oh, it's so easy to get off, and I can't really do it. But here's the other thing. Here I am. Wide stance. Here's my, I jab. Now I'm going to throw in a wide stance my right see my whole body starts getting catered off and I didn't really get hardly any more distance I don't even know if I if I if I'm just getting to where my jab is right I'm getting a little further but not much further now if I'm here in a narrow stance right and I throw that jab look what happens I'll back up narrow stance I throw that jab when I twist when I twist I only have to try and I got the same distance he probably doesn't even read because if you're like this and he's looking at your foot he's backed up further He's further away. If he's like this and he's feeling his distance based on your stance, he's closer, right? When I'm right here and I throw, if I throw and I'm reaching further for where my, look, bam. If I take a tiny step, bam. And it's a fast punch and I've got him in reach and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing myself off balance but I'm still getting my backhand all the way to his chin, right? What happens if I'm here? So I'm here and I go one, two, I throw that right. Since I'm not re falling over, even if I miss, I can come over and keep throwing punches. Bam, bam. You see, if I'm out, if I have a wide stance and I throw, then I'm, it's just hard. Suddenly I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. The other thing is, is if you have that narrow stance, you'll, you can be like, no need to narrow. Not only does it help with that backhand, right? But you've got your, your stances a little bit tighter. You can twist your hips faster. You can throw that hook. If you have a big stance, try to throw that hook. Even if you just, little stance, bam, right? So a lot of it comes down to, to whether or not you're exaggerating your stance. Now I do understand it's natural. People want to push something. They want to push the car. They get their feet wide and they push. They feel stronger, but we're not pushing. We're shooting punches, right? That's the whole point. We're not pushing, right? And it's not only your punches, it's what do you do after you punch? What do you do after you punch? You have, a, you have your stance, which is sensible. Bam, bam, bam. You come do, and you got your balance, right? If you have a big stance, bam, bam, bam. Uh-oh, I already stepped, look at that. When I went under, my back foot started dragging, and I know better than that, and then I'm open and I'm square, okay? Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the back, and I and because it's, you know, I'm a little bit limited with the white trash gazebo and the white trash tool set, tool, tool shack, love shack, maybe you'll be able to see my feet but here's another thing you can do to teach yourself a little to teach yourself if you don't have somebody there watching right some guys really do have problems shooting this backhand they start pushing it they start pushing it right and they and they try and try and they actually start teaching themselves because you're getting frustrated you're getting tired you're trying you can't see everything you're doing and you just feel like you're just pushing it more and your arms getting tired and you're not you're not popping it you're pushing it right so what you do is you start teaching yourself 
to throw from a southpaw, or if you're a southpaw, from the, from the right-handed orthodox position. And you start teaching yourself to do it from the other side. Why? Because you're going to have to focus on every little step or it won't work at all. It's like, you know, you grow up, you grow up throwing a baseball, and then if you're a guy, you try to throw a baseball with your, your backhand, and it's like, mm, you, you, you throw not like you should throw. I'm not going to say anything sexist nowadays. Everybody's so freaking sensitive. Um, but so what you're going to do is you're going to teach yourself how to throw the backhand from the southpaw. And you look at every little thing. And you have to or you won't be able to do it. Now, I'm not going to say I'm great at throwing a backhand from a southpaw. You'll see it in a, minute, in a minute. But here's what you focus on. First of all, don't have too wide a stance, just like what I said. Have a stance that's sensible. So here, like if there's a line in the dirt and my front foot's here and my, my heel's kind of there, see it's kind of like that, right? So it's sensible. This foot's more going forward. This foot's more going that way. If we're in the south pole, it'd be like this. But we're, I mean, in the orthodox, it'd be like that. But we're in the south pole. Now, here you are. You want to throw that backhand. You can start by feeling out like that. And then when you throw, bring this hand back. That's a good way. You can practice that in orthodox, right? Just get it out there. Feel your distance. And bam, if you're not getting any pop, that's not a bad thing to do. Okay? But let's say you're in the south pole. Okay, what are you going to have to do? Well, we've talked before in the other videos about how when you're throwing the when you're throwing the backhand, you want to turn that hip, get that heel out. You can exaggerate it and get your knee in. If you're not getting it, if you're throwing and you notice that you're throwing and your foot's kind of sticking to the ground, then go ahead and turn that knee further in. Bam! So you're in the southpaw, right? So let's feel it out like that. And then what happens, I take a little step. It's natural because here I'm feeling it, a tiny step, a tiny step. And when I take that tiny step, I'm not step, I don't want to step like this. You see my foot? I don't want to step like that. If I step like that and I try to throw, then the natural thing is to start reaching way over. Okay? What you do, you're going to take that step. You can even turn your foot out a little bit when you take. So I'm reaching, I'm reaching, bam, I took that step. You see my foot? I'm not doing like that. If I was in the orthodox and I was testing, testing. See that first little step? I didn't turn my foot like that. Maybe I didn't turn it out, but it kind of feels like it when you do. So that way, it's like throwing a baseball. If you're here and you threw the baseball, what happens? You see my front foot? I didn't throw like this, right? I threw and my front foot stepped out. This front foot stepped out. Same thing. So if I'm in the orthodox, I'm here, I measure distance, take that tiny little step to throw to throw, right? And when I did, I turn, I make sure to turn, I might exaggerate in the beginning, to turn my knee in to get my back heel out, right? It's an exaggeration, but it'll help you get there. So you're in the southpaw now. Same thing. Here we are. I'm measuring, I'm measuring, I'm measuring, and then when I'm going to throw, tiny little step, but that step's not like this, tiny little step, and then bam, right? Bam. I'm going to go straight down, straight down, get my ear over, but my back foot has to come out. If my foot's wide, you'll see that your foot doesn't want to come out. Your foot wants to maybe drag. If your stance is a little bit here, measure, measure, and then you take that little step, bam, your foot automatically comes out, but make sure, feel yourself turn that knee in, okay? Now, again, it's coming from your feet, so it's a step, a twist, and then your arm goes forward, okay? Then your arm goes forward. If I'm over here, right? If I'm in the orthodox position, here I am. Here I am. Let's say I measure, I measure, pop, pop. Hip, knee, upper body, bam, okay? If I'm in the southpaw position, here I am, here I am, here I am. Measure, let's measure. We're only measuring to practice so we get used to feeling the right shot on the back. That's why. We're not, I'm not saying you have to measure all the time when you're sparring. But here we are. Here we are. I'm, I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure. And then that little step and that hip and that knee and that back foot out and my arm comes last. So here I am. Here I measure. Measure. Bam. Okay. Bam. Now, is my left hand, my back hand in a southpaw? as good as my backhand on this side? No. But it, it will work. And what it does is when I'm making myself learn how to throw it, when I'm making myself learn how to throw it, and especially if you get where you can so and say jab, jab, pop, and I'm learning how to throw it, 
I'm teaching myself, remembering that, and then if I'm having trouble one day and I'm pushing on the bag, those, those little tips that I taught myself about tiny little step with the front foot so that I can get that twist, twist, get my knee in, everything's going first, my shoulders last, right? My shoulders last, and also at the end, use your thumb, bop, right? Then, if you're in the orthodox and things aren't working out for you, well, what did I do? Well, I actually taught myself how to do it with my left hand. What do I do with my left hand? Yeah, I don't have too wide of a stance, right? I can practice measuring, measuring, measuring. Tiny, it's a tiny, tiny step to get that twist, to get that knee in, bop, right? So, bop, bop, or yeah, yeah, bop, right? Jab, jab, bop. And I can move and get, and because I don't have to, such a wide stance, I can move out of it, okay? Some of you, don't even need what I just told you as far as your backhand, your right hand. It'll come naturally. You, you hit fast, you hit hard. I noticed that some guys that hit fast and hard though, since they do it naturally, they don't learn how to, how to actually shoot it and get it straight. Um, but if you have a trainer who's sitting there, has an eye on you, that'll help. But what I will tell you, a sensible stance, a more traditional stance that's not so wide, will help you get speed and pop power not clubbing power, but popping power. And it will leave you in a position that you can keep moving. You can throw a combo, you can move, you can come off it. You don't wide, get slow, and it's easy to make mistakes fast. Just that much time, because I'm so wide, means it comes straight down the pipe and it hits me, okay? All right, I think that's enough to get my point across. We're gonna go to the bags. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see my feet. You may have to trust me there, but, but I'll show you what I'm talking about on the bag, and then I'll even show you with my backhand. We'll see if I can hit anything at all with my backhand. I have to admit that since I got sick and everything, I don't have the, I don't feel very dynamic, but okay, let's go. One, two, three, off. Okay, so here we are in the Love Shack. Uh, it rained and rained. Everything's wet. Uh, I just hung up, I hung up kind of a light bag because everything's wet, and I'm just lazy, I guess. Uh, I tried to get the camera in a position where you could see my feet, but I just can't. I can't do it. Uh, as you can tell, more and more junk is appearing in the in the love shack every day, right? Uh, so we're going to do what we can, okay? And I hope you can hear me. I think you can. I, it may be a little quiet. Uh, sorry about that. But if I put a mic on and I hit it and it comes off and lands on the ground, it's going to land in some puddles of water, even though I swept them up. Right. Okay. So here we are. Now... Let's talk about again. We're just going to go through this. Now look, in your stance, I'm going to show you how this works on the back. If your stance is wide, you may feel like you're getting a lot of power, but look what happens. Let's say if I put my jab out here, right? Because if I put my jab out, at, I'm not, I'm not going to stand right, you know, like that. I guess unless I have really long arms. But there's the target with my jab, okay? My stance is wide. Bam! I can, I can hit him with my jab. But when my stance is wide like that, and I, a little step I hit with my jab, with my backhand, oh, it's hard to reach him, and I start, I start reaching over, right? Now look what happens, okay? I just bring my stance in. I didn't change, I didn't change my distance, right? So he still feels like it's the same distance, okay? So here I am, first of all, it's gonna be easier with my jab because I can take a bigger step. I could back way up here and do like a Golovkin step where you take a long, a long step and really straighten it out with the jab. So, bam, right? But if I'm just here and I don't even hardly take a step and my stance isn't so so wide, it's like this, well, man, there's no problem for me to get to get him with the jab and he feels like the distance is the same because see, if my stance is wide, my head's in the same place, right? But here's the, here's the real advantage. Here I am with my stance in the same place. I put my jab in about the same place. But my stance isn't so wide. And I can, if I turn my, my, my knee in, my heel out, then there's no, no reason why I can't reach that guy, right? I have to, I'll take a tiny step, right? Bam. Easy. Easy. Stance wide in the same place. Uh, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. And I'm going to wind up off balance and reaching. Okay, so that's the first thing, right? We talked, okay, now, let's switch to a southpaw, which is me, I'm gonna have my back to you a little bit. There's not much I can do about that, but you, you just listen. If you're having trouble still 
in your orthodox, if you're a natural orthodox, and you feel like you're pushing your back hand, go to the southpaw stance and teach yourself the fundamentals in reverse. Because then when you go back to the right hand stance, you'll have it like encoded in your head. And you also will maybe develop a good backhand out of the southpaw stance. If you can't, just one thing, I'm not saying fight southpaw, right? Some guys are naturally talented. If you can't get, though, a backhand out of the southpaw stance, what's the point of fighting out of the southpaw stance, right? But anyway. Okay, so I'm in the southpaw stance. Now, my backhand, this is my, using my jabbing hand, my backhand doesn't feel as strong as when my right hand is my backhand. That's natural. How am I going to teach myself? Well, you got to teach yourself all those movements, okay? So here I am in a proper stance, right? Not too much weight on the front foot, more weight on the back foot, so that way I can step through. We talked about that, right? Right now I'm going to I'm going to practice by measuring, by measuring, okay? So what happens though is when remember, when I'm going to throw that back hand, I'm going to take a little step with that front foot, a tiny step, but not a step you know, my front foot's going to step pretty straight. You can't see my feet, I know. But, and then I'm going to turn that hip, that knee, that heel, and my, my shoulder and my, my, my punch is coming last, right? Because my power is going to be out of my feet, okay? In the beginning, it's not going to feel very natural. But here's, here's also one other thing. People, when they try to do this, a lot of times I notice that they, they're here and they step and they sort of stand up. You stand up, you're gonna lose your power. So you gotta remember, even if you're in a southpaw stance, when you when you throw that punch, right, and you twist that leg, don't stand up. You, it's not you're not stepping off a baseball man. Bam, turn it in, but sit down on your punch. Okay? So here we are in a southpaw stance, right? And believe me, my left arm, this arm is not as strong as my right arm, especially since I had a shoulder injury. But okay, we'll see if we can do it. We're measuring, we're measuring. Now, in slow motion, slow motion, what do I do? Tiny step forward, you can take a bigger step forward, but a tiny step forward, knee, hip, it's coming out, this hand's coming back, and bam, right? And bam, since my stance isn't so wide, it's easy for me to turn my hips, you see? So, if I'm gonna start out, don't start out the first time trying to throw it as hard as you can. You might hurt yourself, but you also, it'll feel weird. So let's let's start out. Here we are. We're measuring. We're measuring. Bam. All right. Doesn't feel that bad. Why didn't it feel bad? I didn't try very hard, but I did. I took a tiny step with my foot going more straight, like, like, step, like throwing a baseball. Turn my knee, turn my heel out, and then my punch came last, right? So here we go. We'll measure again. We'll measure again. Here we go. Here we go. And bam! I even slipped a little bit on the water, but I still got a decent pop off my back hand. Now, I say, okay, let's take that lesson. I just taught myself a little bit. Let's take that lesson back to my right hand, okay? Because let's say I was having trouble. I was pushing my back hand. Okay, let's measure. Same thing. Let's measure, measure. What are we going to do? Tiny little step as if we're stepping, we're throwing a baseball, right? Turning this back foot, turning this back, turn that hip. Your back foot's going to come out. And so it'll be straight. It'll naturally be straight, right? So I measure. Feels easy. I didn't feel off balance or anything. You don't try as hard as you can when you first start. Let's try it a little harder than now, okay? So here I am. I measure. I measure. I measure. Feels okay. Feels okay. You see, the big thing is I'm throwing it, getting a little pop. I'm not trying to put everything I have on it, but getting a little pop, but I'm not throwing myself off balance. If I had a big stance, I throw myself off balance. If we go back, maybe you can see if I go, I just don't have room. If I'm in a southpaw stance, the same thing, the same thing. Little step, knee, twist, heel out, right? And pop. And it feels okay. Now, gosh, it's so wet in here and slippery. All right, let me try it. Let, I'll try it again. Let's it again. Now, I was pushing the back hand. Now, I was thinking, what did I just do? I taught myself how to throw the back left hand a little bit. So here we are, if we're in the right hand, we're measuring, measuring, bam, all that felt a little bit better. I put a little bit more on that, and it was easy. I didn't feel off balance at all. And I didn't, I didn't knock myself back or throw myself off, even though I'm standing in a lake of mud right now, okay? Okay, so you got it. 
Now, if you get the fundamentals down and you're not getting such too wide a stance and slinging yourself, then what we just talked about, that can help you on a one, two, or even a one, two, three, right? So a one, two, if I, if I throw a one, two, when I finish the two, I don't want to be off balance because then I can't move. I can't, I can't bob under, I can't shift, right? But if we use our legs and our feet, even standing in like a mud, you won't kill yourself, right? So, I feel fine. I feel fine because I threw the one. I, tr I used my, my legs, my knee, my heel came out to throw the two. When I hit, I'm not off balance at all. What does that mean? That means that I'll be in a natural position to throw one, two, three to throw the hook. Because that one, then I use my knee, my hit, I throw that, that two, and then when I just come back on my heel, then my then my left hook comes around, right? And if it wasn't going very well, then I'll turn around and I'll practice that in the south block. Okay, now look what happens if I want to throw the one, two, three. Throw the one, two, three, because what happens on that backhand, right? I'm just gonna come back down on my heel to throw the three, to throw the three. So here we go, here we go. Okay, wasn't beautiful, but not that bad. Not that bad for left-handed, right? Southpaw punch, because I'm just using my knees and my hips. Bam, bam, bam. I'm not throwing myself off balance, right? That pop is coming from down here. It's actually, when you get used to it, you can slip and pop, slip and pop. It's all coming from your legs. Slip, pop, pop, slip, pop, straight. You see what I mean? So I hope that's helpful. Maybe we'll get a little bit wetter, better weather next time and it won't be so freaking slippery and nasty in here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is Conrad GLG Boxing signing off and gradually trying to get back in shape and going to have to go clean up because standing in all kinds of mess here. Anyway, see you soon. Bye-bye.